الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we thank Allah subhanahu wa taala that has given us this opportunity to be discussing the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as as you have followed us we have started by the blessing of Allah Surah al-Baqarah we discussed about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim which we talked about it in Surah al-Hamd Alif Lam Mim we talked about it Thalika al-Kitabu La Rayba Fi we uh, to if I remember correctly we finished by Thalika al-Kitab that book and we discussed why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing book rather than saying this book Allah says that book it was for honoring and exalting and the respect that there is for the Quran and another meaning that we understood from the commentators was that we have access to the actual book the physical book but the true meaning of the Holy Quran is very very far from us which we have to on a daily basis ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala read and look at the narrations of Ahlul Bayt try to gain as much as possible from these verses of the Holy Quran and an example comes also that it's not that much about physical rather it's about the meaning and the spiritual we give an example to make it closer to your mind inshallah what do we mean that we are far and that 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 book it means that the meaning is far from us and we have to try to every day to go higher and higher and higher in understanding the holy verses of quran so for example, as far as physical is concerned within people, and then we're going to come apply it to the Quran. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi had many companions around him. And many people saw him and communicated with him and used to see him on a daily basis. But there was an individual who never saw the Prophet physically, and the Prophet didn't see him physically, and he did not communicate with the Prophet physically and verbally basically. But Rasulullah used to say how much I yearn to see this individual. I smell the fragrance of heaven from the city that that person used to live, even though he did not see the, the Prophet. And that is a uh, companion of Rasulullah, again, not by the definition of seeing the Rasulullah, but he was during the time of the life of the Prophet by the name of Awais al-Qarani. He was from Yemen. He was far away from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa where the story goes that he really wanted to come, he, Islam reached him, he accepted Islam, and he really wanted to go and see the Prophet. But he had an ill mother, and which he was taking care of it, and his mother wouldn't give him permission to go to Medina. And it almost was two weeks to three weeks distance horse ride from Yemen to Medina. And uh, one, time, one time he was able to successfully get his mother's approval, and come to Medina but his mother said if you get to Medina the, the, the Holy Prophet who was there you don't come down from your horse you will talk with him I mean you will come down communicate you come back the same day if the, the Holy Prophet wasn't there you should not come down from your horse come back right away he gets to Medina after two weeks or maximum three weeks of commuting to get to Medina finding out that Rasulullah has gone to a, one of the battles that he was trying to defend and he was being attacked Right away, he said, I have to go back. He asked about the Prophet, and they told him he's not there. He was about to go back. They told him, well, how about you come, rest a couple of days. He will come back. He said, I have promised my mother that I will go back the same day if the Prophet was not there, and I will not come down from my horse. And he went back. He went back a couple of days later. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, arrived to Medina. He said, I smell the fragrance of heaven from Yemen. And that was basically Awais al-Qarani, how much Rasulullah wanted to see him. But unfortunately, he, Awais did not have the blessing to, Ras, to see the Rasulullah physically. But he was really, really close to the Holy Prophet. Which, how much dear he was to the Holy Prophet, even though physically they were far away. And unfortunately, we see some people, some of the companions and very close companions of the Holy Prophet, that they were close physically to the Holy Prophet. But spiritually, mentally, they were miles and miles and thousands of miles away. And we see what they did after the departure of the Holy Prophet, what they did to the 
daughter of the Holy Prophet and how they deviated from the true Islam. So same thing with the Quran. Some people might have the Quran physically next to them, reading on a daily basis, but not thinking about it, not pondering about the verses, not applying the teachings of the Holy Quran, not at all, but they're trying to have very, very good recitation, but the meaning, it's completely away from them, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So we have to focus on both. Good recitation, memorization, reading, perfect recitation of the Holy Quran, in combination with it, understanding the Holy Verses of Quran, and applying it. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه that there is no doubt in it. لا ريب فيه well, you might say, well, there are people who have doubts within, in the Holy Quran that this is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a man-made. Well, this is an argument that they have. لا ريب فيه means one meanings that we see within the commentators that there is no doubt that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People can say whatever they want to say, but we see, we have seen, and we have read even recently, there were people starting the time of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt salam until today. There are people, and they were, and they are, and they will be people who are trying to find uh, problems, mistakes, errors, contradictions within the Holy Verses of Quran. And we see a lot of those people who try to do this and they dedicate their time to find the mistakes and errors and contradictions within the Holy Verses of Quran. After a week or two or month or year or two, they themselves are guided and convert to Islam. We see them within different countries, within the Western countries. You can research it. How much there were people, how many the people there were that they tried to find contradictions but after reading and going into the depth of the Holy Quran and trying to understand so they can find the contradictions and the mistakes, the Quran guided them back. Because there is no doubt within the Holy Quran. And if there is any, it's in the heart of the people. It's not within the Quran. People who have doubtful mindset and they look at the Quran with that mindset. So if they truly, if an individual truly purifies its heart, he will not find any doubt within the Holy Quran. The question might come, why the Holy Verses of Quran and the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says that this book, which we said this not, is not the right translation, that book, which is the meaning of Quran and the Quran, it's guidance, it's a guidance to the pious. Isn't it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the Qur'an is for everybody? Khudan lil nas. Then why is it that in here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says khudan lil muttaqeen? Why is it? Very good question. Is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Allah picking and choosing who to guide, who not to guide? And He is only choosing those pious people to guide and this holy book is only for those people who are pious? It's a very good question. Inshallah, we'll discuss it. Definitely, you're right. Quran is for mankind. Religion of Islam is for man mankind. It's for everybody to be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us for us to end up in hellfire and to have a bad life and a wretched life. Rather, He created us for us to be elevated and to get closer and closer to Him and to, inshallah, enter heaven in our, for our eternal life. But it is us that we pick, and we pick to be guided or not to be guided. There are two, group of, two groups of people. There's a group of people that they are not stubborn and they have, they are looking for the truth. They want, if they see the truth within their mindset, they have this mindset that if I get to know the truth, I will follow it. I will not deviate. I will follow the truth. So that by itself is the first level of piety. That if I'm introduced to the truth, if I see the truth, I will follow it. That's the first level. If a person has that mindset and starts researching and reading and asking questions, they will definitely find the truth. And as soon as they see the truth, because that they had that 
mindset of me finding the truth, I will follow it, they will follow it. So in that case, hence, Quran will be a guidance for them. Pious because pious has different level. There are different levels of piety. Doesn't mean that uh, piety has only one meaning, one rank, one level. No, there are levels that we are, all of us, inshallah, we're trying to go to the higher and higher and higher and higher level of piety. But on the other hand, there is a group, there are a group of people, there's a group of people that they are really stubborn, following their desires, following their egos, and they have this idea even, even if we find the truth, and even though they find the truth, they reject. Of course, this Quran won't guide them. I'll give you example. Example of individual sleeping and individual pretending to be sleeping. If individual individual sleeping, you try to wake them up, they wake up, wake up, they wake up because they were sleeping genuinely. But there are people who are pretending to be sleeping physically. They just close their eyes that they're pretending they're sleeping. When you call them, wake up, wake up, they hear you, but purposely they don't want to get up for whatever reason that they have in mind. So that's physically. Same thing applies to spiritually and mentally. There are people who, are, who haven't been introduced to the truth yet. They don't know the truth yet. So they are walking their lives and they're hoping that uh, when they've been exposed to the truth and the, the truth has been shown to them, they will follow it. They are like those people who are sleeping. On the other hand, you have those people who don't want to accept the truth, who purposely reject. Reason why? Because the truth might Takes them, take them away from that luxury life that they had, from their desire. That truth will be contradict with their egos. The, the truth will want them to be humble. The truth want them to be caring for other people. The truth want them to give to other people. The truth want them to be good to other people, be benevolent to other people. Well, they don't want, they want to go with their mindset of me, mine. It's me, it's all about me, what I can get, what I can have more and more and more. For these people, of course, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't be a guidance for them. Not that the book won't guide. No, they don't want to be guided. We have fa'aliyatul fa'al and qabaliyatul qabil within the Arabic. It's not about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can guide. It's there for guidance. But if I don't want to be guided, well, I won't be. For example, I put a GPS in my car and I put a destination. I want to go from point A to point B. I put the destination in the middle of the way, I decide I want to go back. As soon as I take the exit, the GPS keeps telling me, well, make the first U-turn and go straight. I want to go back. For whatever reason, I want to go back. Either legitimate reason or not legitimate reason. Well, the GPS keeps telling me go back until I don't turn it off. It keeps recalculating and recalculating and recalculating to find us the nearest U-turn, the nearest turn, the nearest bridge that we can go on it and come back. Until we say, okay, no, just turn off. I want to go back for one reason, for whatever reason. So the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for guiding mankind. But if I don't want to be guided, I won't be guided. Another example, a father has two sons. One of them shows obedience. A father loves both of them equally. Parents love their kids equally. One of them shows obedience and Hence, gets more of the father's teachings and able to get better life. The other one, it's stubborn. He is arrogant. He wants to go through the life by himself and gain whatever he wants to gain. Well, the father keeps guiding. The one who wants to be guided and shows obedience, of course, he will be guided. I will give the last example. Example of satellite. We have dish. There is a satellite in the sky sending us frequency we buy the receiver we buy the satellite if we don't bring the direction of satellite our dish toward the satellite we won't get the frequency oh i don't like the dish to be this way i want it to be this way okay put it this way you won't receive the frequency and the signal i like it this way my uh, the design of my house if i put it for example on my roof it's going it's not going to look nice i want to put it on my in my backyard Okay, put it in your backyard. It needs to be somewhere high, and it needs to be to this direction. Well, there are trees in here. You have to put it on top of your roof in order for you to be able to receive the frequency. 
So the satellite is sending a frequency and a signal. It's about us bringing the dish and putting it toward the satellite in order to get the frequency and to be able to uh, enjoy what we are trying to watch. So Quran is hudan linnas, same as sun sheds light to everybody. But some people build the house toward the sun, they will gain the benefit. Some people will build the house against the sun, they will not gain the benefit. It's for, Quran is for pure nature, these people who want Allah created us, but we deviate. Hudan lil but on the other hand, Allah says, la yahdil, many verses of the Holy Quran, I just read through it, and Allah, لا يهد القوم الفاسقين So the Tawbah chapter verse 80 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not guide corrupt people Basically, I put myself in corruption I keep doing corruption and corruption Signals comes Allah wants us to be guided Shows us signs after sign after sign after sign Well, when we decide not to completely ignore Allah signs Allah says, okay, go Allah, لا يهد القوم الظالمين Those oppressed, Allah will not guide them these are the verses of Quran. Allah will not guide those who are disbelievers who are insisting on disbelieving. If we just read this, Allah, Allah, Allah does not guide the kuffar. We'll say, oh Allah hates kuffar. Well, we have to think a little bit. Allah doesn't hate kuffar. If he hated them, why he sent Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi rahmatan lil alameen as a mercy to mankind. He wanted to guide. He wants us to be guided all. But if we decide we want to insist to stay away, well, that's not going to work. Guidance. Allah doesn't, those who are liars, Allah will not guide them. Those, extra, those people who are extravagant, Allah will not guide them. So inshallah, we're not amongst those people. We want to change. We are willing to change. We are willing to accept the truth no matter what happens. Inshallah, the rest of the discussion will be in the next episode insha'Allah we will conclude by recitation of Dua Al-Faraj asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun la waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadha sa'ata wa fi kulla sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinu wa ardaka tawa wa tamatta'u fiha tawila rahmatika ya arhamar rahmin Ooh.